number one would be to pack a ton of ice cube ice cubes yes just throw ice cubes everywhere and then when it melts you're gonna be like manners why but why though I have 120 grams of egg whites with spinach and tomatoes, onions, green peppers, and then I put a little laughing cow cheese on there with some avocado, turkey bacon, blueberry English muffin with natural Jif cinnamon peanut butter, and I'm so excited to eat this because I freaking love breakfast. If you're wondering why my hair looks like a greasy mess, that's because it is, because I dumped coconut oil in it and slept in it since my hair was like so stiff Full of hairspray and everything from the photo shoot I did yesterday. I gotta put a picture here because my hair was like freaking out of control so I want you guys to see. It felt like a wig. It was so gross. It had so much product in it so I slept in coconut oil so it kind of looks nasty. Just pretend you don't notice. It's fine. Do you like it with this lens better? I feel like this is way too far away. I decided for a Snapchat Q&A in the meantime while I can't figure out what exactly I want to do for a video. So the first question and sent me their shoes asking for what type of shoe should I be looking for? I think this is actually a really good question. There's different things that you should be looking for depending on what you're trying to do in the gym. So I know a lot of people for deadlifting, they like Converse because the sole is completely flat. For squatting, however, you do want to have a little bit of a heel. I'll put a little picture of my Nike Romaleos here. I'm sure you've seen them before in my what's in my gym bag. I'll link that video right there as well just so you guys can take a look. But it's good to have a little bit of heel in your squat shoes. Also keeping them flat though, you don't want to have a heel like a running shoe. You want it to be supportive. Question for your Q&A, what type of di diet do you follow? I-I-F-Y-M RP strength. That's another good question as well. I actually follow a mix of both. I follow a pretty flexible diet overall. I don't like to restrict foods. I don't think that there's like bad foods or good foods. I just kind of like to do like a well-balanced diet. I eat a ton of lean meats and veggies, and complex carbs and simple carbs and fiber and iron and all my vitamins and everything. So if I want an Oreo or I want some non-dairy ice cream, I can fit it into my day. And I also kind of follow RP Strength in the sense that I do the majority of my carbs pre and post workout, mostly simple carbs. So I have like white rice post workout with my chicken or whatever. I mean, you guys have seen me make my meals all the time, so you know kind of what I eat. On different volumes of training days, I also change my intake just a little bit. So on a day where let's say I have a two a day training session, I was in the gym for like two and a half hours, I had heavy back squats, clean and jerks, whatever, and then I also did a Metcon in the evening. That's a day I would consider a high volume training day and I'll up my carbs about 50 grams. For rest days, I do the same thing, but just decrease my carbs 50 grams, and it kind of just keeps me at maintenance no matter which type of training day I have. I was wondering what your favorite cheat dessert meal would be. Is it cupcakes, brownies, regular cake? What is it? Actually, I don't do cheat meals. I really, really don't. Yesterday, I had a pumpkin spice cake donut from Dunkin' that I did perfectly fit into my macros. A lot of people would consider that a cheat meal, but again, I don't really like to associate booze with cheating. I feel like if you really want that donut, you can make it work and you can still reach your goals. It's not gonna make you gain a ton of weight. You know, I've said this a thousand times, not one food, not one specific meal is gonna make you gain weight, just like one specific meal or one specific food is going to make you lose weight. So keep that in mind, but if I had to pick a favorite treat treat. I would definitely say donuts. You know, I love my gourmet donuts. Hey Mathis, I just wanted to ask, how do you pack meals for a whole day away from home or restaurants? I have that struggle. So packing for an entire day. Number one, you need to get a good lunch box. I showed you guys in one of my mail time videos, the Jack's lunch box. I really like that one because it's insulated all the way around. Definitely get a big box lunch box. What I would recommend is to pack foods that don't easily spoil. Like I'm never gonna put anything like fish or, I don't know why, I feel like that's more sketchy than putting chicken in there, just my personal opinion. As the day goes on, I will eat the things that will probably spoil first 
first in my day. So like if I packed a yogurt, I would eat that first. Then I'd have like granola bars or something for the end of the day. My sandwich for the middle of the day. You can never go wrong with peanut butter and jelly. I tend to pack that like for CrossFit competitions or things that I'm away from my house for the entire day. You can also do things like protein bars, protein cookies, Lenny's and Larry's obviously. And you can do things like those little protein pouches that are kind of like baby food. But in the case of an emergency and you don't have a meal and you really don't want to go to a restaurant, they're not bad. They're I don't know how many questions that was, but I'm just gonna end this little mini Snapchat Q&A here. I'm gonna take all this stuff to the dumpster, which is kind of far, so I'm gonna get my cardio in for the day, just run back and forth in the dumpster and take all that in there. Yeah, so I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Going to get a DEXA scan today, so I'm very excited about that. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. See ya. Interrupting this Manders episode. <laughs> for a Think Thin High Protein Bar, Lemon Delight. I have been all about these bars lately. I'll give you a little natural lighting here. They are just so good, and this lemon one is great. What's up, guys? Um, I'm headed to get a DEXA scan right now, and if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a bone density test, but also shows you your body fat, your lean muscle mass, like where it's distributed, any muscle imbalances, and things like that, so I'm really excited to see. I've never had one before. <laughs> Our DEXA machine. We're here at DEXA Fit Boca. I'm Joanne, and um, this is the clinical gold standard in determining your most accurate body composition results. Um, its clinical accuracy is superior to all other methods, including the BOD pod, hydrostatic weighing, bioelectrical impedance, and skin calipers. It's able to see into the body, picturing all body fat accurately, including visceral fat around and inside the organ tissue. We're excited to see yeah. Amanda. You have 23.3% fat. Jeez. That's like a huge difference from the from the water thing. Really? Yeah. Your arms have 9.8 pounds of muscle and 3.6 pounds of fat. Your right arm has 9.4.9, left arm 4.8. Your fat is the same, 1.8. Your legs have 26.4 pounds of muscle, 11.2 pounds of fat. Your right leg, you have 12.9 pounds of muscle. Your left leg, you have 13.5 pounds of That's muscle. That's weird. Your trunk, which is your entire shoulders to hip ratio, you have 42.4 pounds of muscle, 10.8 pounds of fat. Jeez. Your android, which is your waist, which is right above your pelvis right there, you have um, 5.8 pounds of muscle, one pound of fat. Your gynoid, which is your hips and thighs, 30% of fat, 11.9 pounds of muscle, 5.5 pounds of fat. So looking at all the fat percentages, your gynoid, which is your hips and thighs, is where you carry it. Yeah, oh, for the sure. Most. Um, and then there's your skeleton there. We could see that, you know, that little bit of scoliosis, like you said. Oh, weird. So that's interesting. Um, 89 and a half pounds of you is fat-free. Your skeleton weighs 4.8 pounds. You have 84.6 pounds of muscle and 27.2 pounds of fat. <laughs> 